Hey, all y'all. I'm an herb farmer from Texas, and I got big issues. You see, all my herbs keep dying in the greenhouse. I can't keep the conditions right. Bless their hearts. So we had this herb competition coming up at the end of January, and I heard there might be some automated system that could keep the conditions right for all of my herbs and make my work so much easier. So I was wondering if somebody could do something like that. Mm-hmm. I said, I wonder if there's someone who could help me with this. We've got you, Chad. Thank goodness. So the initial uh, construction of the box actually started two months ago when I had to make up a plan with all the parts that were needed to design the frame and all the bolts and nuts that we need um, so that we could actually start working from day one on and have the box already here and work on it. Um, everything that we couldn't find on the internet we used a 3D printer for to design these parts very specific and individually. They were designed in the software of Unity 60 and then afterwards printed out. Fusion 360 makes it possible to design details of all kinds of shapes from scratch. The program gives you a lot of tools for creating basic figures and lines that you can manipulate, distort, combine together and modify to create the complex 3D structure that you need. In order for the design parts to fit together and with other objects well, very precise and scrupulous measurements have to be carried out before starting to design the component. The Fusion 360 file with the design can then be exported to Cura and uploaded to the 3D printer. Even though we faced some issues with the calibration at the start, soon we sorted them out and we were able to print all the necessary pieces for the box. So Chris, now that we've decided to build this automated plant growth robot mm -hmm. thing, I was thinking we need something that does all of our computations. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to take something that can process a lot of sensor data, like an Arduino, for example. You think that would work? Uh, you can only hard code an Arduino to really only run one script. Can, can it run Python? No. No, no, it can't right now. Oh, it's annoying. You really need to find a solution for this. If you tried that pie. This Raspberry Pi. We could use a Raspberry Pi. Is that this microcomputer? Exactly. It's a Linux system. Mm -hmm. And it runs Python. Full-blown computer. Let's do it. A Raspberry Pi is at its essence a small programmable computer. In this project only one was used to control one Arduino. An Arduino is a small controller which allows for steady connection and communication from the sensors to the Raspberry Pi. Let me show you how it all works. The website was constructed to be responsive and scalable to all different screen sizes and aspect ratios using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Python Flask was used as a framework for the web app. The pages Home, Idea, Approach, Process, Sensor Data, Control Center and About Us were assembled and a CSS style sheet was created to style these pages. To make Robotany accessible to not only the scientific community but also to the general public, the website was created with design principles in mind and user friendliness was taken into account as well. To add an inviting look, the background was set to white and a complementing color scheme with shades of green and blue were used. If the website is accessed through the local network of the Raspberry Pi, a live stream of Robotany sensor data is displayed. Otherwise, a database with the history of the sensor data is accessed and displayed. To interface with Robotany via the website, a dedicated control center with four functionalities was included. The control center is the central hub of Robotany, giving the user a way to interface with the box. The user can choose to activate or deactivate the robot's lamp, fans, 
and pumps. The user can also specify a plant to evaluate via the camera and the AI. For each of the quadrants, the camera moves to the corresponding position in the plant box and takes a picture of that plant. A refined motor system is what allows the camera to move efficiently from one quadrant to the other. Placed on a 3D printed mount, the camera is moved by four motors which rotate the rails along the box. One dimension in the X and Y directions is controlled by two motors, which, when instructed by the script, move the pr camera precisely the same distance along that axis. To reach this precision, some sacrifices had to be made regarding the speed of the camera. Once the 10 minute time travel has passed, a white flash announces that a perfectly colored picture, without any artifacts of the pink light, has been sent to the AI. All good AIs have a name. Some are called Skynet, Gideon or Jarvis. Ours is called Fifty Shades of Green. Now we just needed to teach it how to differentiate between 50 different shades of plants. Because we ran out of budget, we couldn't afford the appropriate server farm and had to reduce to only 6 shades of green. First, we collected images of all 6 different plant species and divided them into a training and a validation dataset. Now, we had to start investing days and days into constructing a complex yet refined and optimized neural network that was built right to do the job. Or we just imported the latest version of EfficientNet. Spending a couple of days copying their data reprocessing, we reached a beautiful score of 92% accuracy on our validation dataset. Taking the classification from the AI, the current soil moisture, the temperature and the humidity sensor readings are compared to our database of ideal conditions for the plant. If there is a discrepancy between the current state and the ideal state, the pumps, fans and light can be adjusted. Our irrigation system allows for each plant to be supplied with its optimum amount of water. If the moisture of the plants is below a specific threshold, the pumps start working and pump water into the soil. There are small holes below the soil to drain any excess water, so our plants are safe from any parasites that thrive in stale water. Like all of us, plants need sunlight to survive. Putting a sun into our robot seemed a bit excessive, which is why we opted for a UV lamp that bathes the plants in wavelengths between 400 and 500 nanometers for 16 hours a day. Don't worry, they are not actually in a red light district. While some plants like it hot, our plants are better suited for non-tropical climates. We therefore needed fans to make our plants receive a steady flow of cool, fresh air. The air flows in through a fan in the upper right corner and out by a fan in the bottom left corner. These positions allow for full ventilation of the box. Controlling airflow not only allows us to mediate temperature, but also to keep the air humidity levels constant. A 16 by 2 LCD display was used so that Robotme could display information to the user. This display is connected to the Raspberry Pi and retrieves live temperature and air humidity data from the sensors in the box, which it then reads out. While Robotney is fully functional, there is still room for improvement. Powered by a state-of-the-art convolutional artificial neural network, the plant detection feature can be expanded to up to hundreds of different plants. And if provided with a suitable data set, a plant disease classification could also be added. Once the plant has been identified, a program control circuit optimizes the conditions for each plant present in the greenhouse. The irrigation, ventilation and light systems are already implemented and fully functional within Robotney. It can serve as a prototype for larger cluster of plants, as every part of our plant growth box is easily scalable. In order to increase the reliability and extend the possible lifetime of future versions of Robotony, printed circuit boards could be implemented. Other possible improvements could be systems that control the pH, the heating, fertilization, and add the pesticides. These systems could also be put into a mobile robot that drives around fields and takes care of a variety of plants. 
Our goal with this project was to implement a proof of concept for automating and therefore increasing agricultural outputs to feed our ever-growing population. But a solution for one global challenge should not contribute to the imminent plastic pollution crisis our environment currently faces. The 3D printing materials utilized could be replaced with a more sustainable printing material like terrafilm. Boy, howdy! This robot is amazing! But won't it only be able to take care of the four plants that are in here now? Well, that may be the case for now. But our robotony is just a prototype. The AI, however, is very scalable, allowing you to add almost an unlimited amount of herbs. With new updates coming out, this bad boy can take care of just about anything you put in it for only $9.99. That's the bee's knees! I can't wait for these updates! My marijuana or harvest <laughs> is gonna be amazing! I'm gonna win this competition for sure!